Hello and welcome to a conversation with artist Kathy Halper, who is one of the exhi exhibiting artists in the seventh annual Evanston Made Group Show and Pop Up Virtual Gallery. Hello, Kathy. Hi, Lisa. Thank you for being here with me. I appreciate it. It's really nice to see you. It's nice to see you. It's nice to be here. We are having a super fun time interviewing people. Um, this feels like a little bit of a census taking project where we're like looking at the humans because we haven't seen each other in a long time. But this is also a really fun way for people who aren't going to get to meet you in person to get to meet you in person. So thank you for being so authentic in advance. <laughs> oh, I'm totally being fake. <laughs> And you're in your studio, so that's what they have to do. That's not a fake Zoom background. <laughs> <laughs> Ignore me. Look over there. <laughs> um, so let's start with, tell us about the piece that is in the show. Can I first, just real quick, I bought this from the show. This is okay. from a pop-up artist. This is Marty DeBar, and it's a new necklace that I just got delivered an hour ago, and oh, I love nice. it so much. It's going to be my new favorite piece of jewelry. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. The piece that's in the show is called Bergen Rooftops. It's from a series I started over last summer, uh, focusing on places I had been, so taking old photos that, um, you know, I just wanted to sort of create like beautiful fantasized memories of places that meant something to me. And that's one of the places that meant something to you, but there's like a whole collection of them, right? Yeah, this is from a cruise. My mother-in-law took us on a cruise 10 years ago. And, you know, I always say I feel like I, I, I don't feel like I've been to Norway, but technically I've been to Norway um, because I spent five minutes at, in Bergen and five minutes in another town. And so anyway, this is a photo that I took when we were in Bergen and I just loved the graphic element of it. I just knew I had to paint it. Like for 10 years, I've been waiting to paint this picture. Nice. And you finally have time. Tell us um, right now, what is on your canvas? What are, what are you working on in your studio? So I'm continuing the series of, uh, of, of places uh, that I, you know, feel attached to. Um, I'm really trying to develop my own sort of folk art style through this series. So that's the other thing is that in addition to them being beautiful places, I want to sort I want to make sure that they are coming from a unique voice. So I'm really, really challenging myself to take influences from folk art and fauvism and pop art and see if I can create something that looks specifically mine, uniquely where, mine. So the, the Bergen Rooftops is part of a series. Where can people see the rest? I mean, I know on the wall behind you, but if people are watching and they want to see it, where can they go to see more of them? Well, um, I have a couple of pieces in the pop-up show, but I, you know, I have a website, kathyhelper.com. And if you go to that website, you know, and click on the, the big picture in the window, it should take you to the contemporary folk art is what I call it. Yes. Okay, good. Um, what is different about your practice since Shelter In? So this is another really weird thing about this project is, yes, we're interviewing artists about like, what are they making? But we're going to look back at this at such a weird moment in time as like, is what's happening in your world as an artist? Um, what's happening with your practice since you've been locked inside now for 11 weeks? <laughs> it's been 11 weeks, wow. Um, you know, I feel awful saying this because there's been so much suffering, but this has been like a dream come true, uh, you know, because uh, I am very much a homebody. I'm somebody who wants nothing more than to be, have a wide open day where I don't have to do anything but paint and take a break to walk the dog and have lunch. And, um, you know, it's like real life. There always seems to be an appointment here and a lunch date here and a friend that I haven't seen in three months that I feel guilty about not seeing. And, you know, and I do have, I, I have all these people I love in my life and, um, it's kind. It's been kind of a blessing to have an excuse where I I can't. Ha I don't have anything in the calendar. I just wake up and do my work. So I've been very productive. <laughs> um, you're not alone. I well, I mean I've certainly heard from a fair amount of artists who are like I'm too traumatized right now with what is happening in the world to make. But I am equally hearing from artists that say things like I never gave myself permission to do projects the way yeah. that I'm doing right now. And so you know good on you that you're being actually productive and prolific. Um, are you happy to not have to go to parties 
uh, for Evanston made every 15 minutes? Are you happy to not be mixing it up with humans? <laughs> yes. Yes. I actually, I find uh, it's strange the older I get that I find social interactions uh, anxiety producing. <laughs> to say the least. So you're happy to not be forced to deal with humans. Totally fair. Okay. Um, let's walk a little bit back uh, without, and without taking 400 hours how did you become an artist? When did you begin to self-identify and give yourself that title? Um, I became an artist out of very logical reasons. I've sort of always made choices with very logical reasons, uh, even though this is very much a passion for me. I had been in advertising for close to 15 years. Uh, I was fed up with that corporate existence. I wanted to start a family and I was determined to stay at home with my kids. I could, um, I could not figure out you know, how to have a job outside of the home and also raise children. So I just was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to try. I tried a few, I dabbled in a few things. I made some paintings that um, I was encouraged. People encouraged me to pursue it. And from there, I started doing summer art fairs. And uh, from there, I started growing as an artist and challenging myself and started to say, okay, I'm done with that. Now I want to do this. And I kept experimenting with uh, materials, mediums, themes. I, st I kept becoming more complex in my thinking. Then I was like, oh, I want to have a gallery. You know, I want to be exhibited in prominent gal galleries. So I set my sights on that. And so I just, uh, I've always considered it, this is my career. It's not a big career, but it's my career. <laughs> <laughs> do, I'm glad you pointed out, if people go to kathyhalper.com, uh, you, have a pr you have a significant variety that, of mediums that you work in, and I first came to know your work during the series that you did at Packershoff Gallery with the social media uh, posts where you would, would knit or, or embroider. embroider these like ridiculous situations that kids were sharing on social media. So I encourage listeners and viewers to go to Kathy's website because she has some fantastic bodies of work, so Thank good you. job on that. Um, and then last question, who's your inspiration other than me? Who? <laughs> oh my God, I go blank after that. Artistically, <laughs> who are your inspirations? So, you know, that change is based on where my head's at with my work. So at the moment, um, I was very inspired by Gabriel Muntor, who is an, uh, an artist who apparently was uh, Kandinsky's uh, arm candy and um and, and and truthfully is like an amazing artist in her own right who didn't get enough attention um and then i really have been very moved and touched by matthew wong who is a young artist who committed suicide a year ago and created this incredible body of work and so he's pop, he's he's more of a pop art influence but i just feed off of him and then the last person right now that i seem to be um, oh, I've always loved like Peter Doig and um, I don't know, but, you know, there's lots of, it kind of depends on what I'm working on. So it depends on your series, what's on your canvas, yeah. but in general, you're, you're always seeking to be inspired by artists across yeah. the world. Um, okay. Well, Kathy, I totally appreciate the time today. My and pleasure. I do just want to give a quick uh, qualifier for those of you who don't know, Kathy Halper is one of the co-directors of Evanston Made. In addition to being an artist, she's running the organization and she's the reason we have well her and her husband rick who've been super instrumental but okay. she's the reason we have a don't don't thank him <laughs> she's the reason we have a a seventh annual show she's the reason we have the virtual gallery and pop-up so i i need for people to know that so they can all high five you on the street and we get to do that again um, in addition to being in the show yeah i'm super grateful that you're on board because this you. project kicks ass kathy helper thank you lisa d <laughs> Oh, it was so much fun listening to people try to pronounce your name yesterday. Yeah, that was Relisa Dinja Satani. Forget it. All right. Thanks, Kathy Halper. Sure. Bye.